Hi. Now, whenever we have a scatter diagram and we work out the equation of the regression line, let's say it takes on the form y equals a plus bx, we're often asked what is the meaning of the constant a and the meaning of the constant b? Well, we should be familiar with the fact that whenever x equals 0, y would equal a. And that represents this point here where the graph crosses the y-axis. We'll just mark it in here as having coordinates 0, a. So it crosses the y-axis a units up here. And b represents the gradient. But it's no good in questions just saying, well, A is where it crosses the y-axis and B is the gradient. What we need to do is give an interpretation of A and B in context with the question that we're given. Let me just demonstrate this. For instance, let's suppose we had, say, a spring. Something like this, OK? And on the end of the spring, we attach a mass. Now the more mass that we put on here, the longer the spring will get. So if we were to draw up a set of axes, okay, and record this, how much it stretches by, by how much we put on the end here, then we also have another problem. How do we label our axes? Which goes where? Do we record the length of the spring, say up here, or down here? And do we record the mass that we put on here, on this axis, or this axis? So this raises another important point. And what we have is that the x-axis is always something called the independent or explanatory variable. And the y-axis is always the dependent or response variable. And what this means is that the value that goes on the y-axis always depends on whatever goes on the x-axis. So in this example here, it's the length of the spring which is dependent on the mass that you put on the end here. It's not the other way around. So the mass is going to be, say, x, we'll say x kilograms, and the length of the spring is going to be our variable y, the dependent variable. OK, that length then depends on what we put on the end of the spring here. So let's just label our axes that this is x, and that's measured in kilograms, say. And we'll have y, which is the length. And we'll say that that's measured in centimetres. Now suppose we record an experiment, OK, and we get a scatter diagram, something like this, OK? We would expect to see something like this. The more mass we put on, the length increases, OK? Now we work out our regression line, say, and we find that the line has an equation, say, something like y equals 13.01 plus 0.49x. So, what do we mean by the 13.01 and what do we mean by the 0.49? So again, it's no good saying that the line intersects the y-axis here at 13.01 and that the gradient is 0.49. What we need to do is give an interpretation to these in the context of the question. So, let's start with 13.01. We know that this is when x equals 0. And so therefore, in relation to this problem, it is essentially the initial length of the spring, when we have no mass on the bottom here. So that would be the interpretation for that. The initial length of the string 
is 13 centimeters approximately okay I know we've got 13.01 here so I'm just going to say 13 centimeters approximately now for the 0.49 okay being the gradient what that means is that essentially for every one unit that we go horizontally we rise 0.49 units so what I'm saying here is that for every one kilogram that's represented in the one unit this way for every one kilogram we expect the length to increase by 0.49 centimeters so we summarize that as by saying for every one kilogram added the spring stretches 0.49 centimeters or I suppose you could say approximately 0.5 of a centimeter okay so let's try another one okay so we'll just uh, come down here and in the next example let's suppose that we have a music teacher and I saw a question like this in a paper a while ago we've got a music teacher sets her students uh, an exercise to do during the course of the week and this exercise they've got to practice okay and she looks at the number of mistakes they make so which one of these two axes records the number of mistakes made and which one records the hours of practice well, we've got to look at which variable depends on the other and it's got to be the number of mistakes made okay we'll just put that in number of mistakes made must depend on the hours of practice so we just put down here hours of practice so we have our independent variable on the horizontal axis x and our dependent variable on the y-axis the vertical axis okay the number of mistakes then being dependent on the hours of practice and what I would expect to see would be a scatter diagram something like this the more hours of practice you put in the number of mistakes starts to go down so our regression line would look something like that say and let's suppose that the equation was y equals 19.8 minus 2.1x now we've got to give an interpretation for 19.8 and 2.1 so I'll give you a moment just to think about that you might even want to pause the video before I tell you okay so just give you a moment okay so what did you uh, think would be the answer then well again we can't say that 19.8 is this point here where the regression line cuts the y-axis 19.8 is when x equals 0 and that means then with no hours of practice the music teacher can expect the student to make say well not 19.8 mistakes you couldn't do that because remember the number of mistakes must be an integer value so it's got to be about 20 mistakes so I've got here that with no hours of practice expect about 20 mistakes now what about the 2.1 we can see it's negative and this represents the gradient you can see the line is going down so it expects a negative gradient but what we're saying is that for every one hour of practice we would expect the number of mistakes to decrease by in theory 2.1 but you can't have that in a practical sense so I'm going to say that for every hour of practice expect a decrease of about two mistakes okay well I hope that's given you an idea then on how we interpret our values for a and b and also what we mean by the independent or explanatory variable and the dependent or response variable